like I don't have a good experience in Buffalo and being from Buffalo. So many bad things happened to me here. Things that I didn't deserve as a kid. Literally, I parked right here. Advice I'm gonna tell young people right now is to kids, y'all gotta, you know, y'all gotta get out the way today. I rode the bike, circled around, went to the churchyard. Everything has made me who I am today. She wants my, she wants this GoPro right here. Or you could give me one. Huh? Or you could give me one. We could take like GoPro videos and send them back and forth to each other as life updates. Yo, that would be sick. Okay, so we should make a we can make a channel like that. I think we should do it. Like that would be hard. Every single week though, we would have to do it. I'm down. I don't know. You you're not all that consistent though. I think I think well, cause I don't have a GoPro. But if you give me a GoPro, then... Oh, so that's the thing. You, you know, a lot of people say that, right? Well, I don't have this, so I can't start that. But she has a phone that she can use while... But it's different. Huh? It's different. Why? Because it's an aesthetic thing. You huh? want to be aesthetically pleasing. I get it. You know, I mean, this is cool to, to shoot, right? Like, you yeah. know, this feels cool to shoot. Okay, Imagine so... if I was walking around everywhere with a GoPro. Right. No, I get it. I mean, I do it. Yeah, see, you do it. Yeah. I would be just like you. I'm proud to put in my curses to rest on my family tree. Can see growth. They tell me they free, but they work for the man. I can't relate. I did it on my own. First time picking up this camera, which I've been uh, using the GoPro for all year, really, to film. And uh, since I've been here in Buffalo for two months now, um, I have not picked up this camera. I have been back in the USA for two months. I've been applying to accelerators for all dreams. This is the, the managing director. I'm looking for high potential visionary founders with big missions and the ability to execute. Man, I think that's me. And I needed to be in the US because a couple of those accelerators, that was part of the stipulation. Of course, daily, I've been working on my startup. Uh, the future will be um, being able to track your video, sort of, sort of like how they did with music when, when, um, when, when Napster and every and everyone was giving away free music. We believe that content that comes from one place will have to be licensed. So part of that 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 premium account will be us being able to track their their videos from when they're a kid all the way until maybe they become pro and someone may screenshot their videos or something like that. How much money do you think you need in order to build it? I think we need a half a million dollars to 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 have a, like a, a 18 month runway. Okay, okay. Uh, what will happen from here is I will make up my report, submit it. And my oldest daughter had her senior prom and she graduated from high school. Savannah L City. <laughs> Not only am I in Buffalo, but my best friend of over 20 years is in Buffalo as well. And uh, today we're gonna go and um, we're gonna go to our old neighborhoods and tell our story. You know, like I have this idea because I wanna do different content, right? I want to do, do content sharing my story and the things that I've learned. It's this thing that I thought about today and I'm like, man, I'm 44 years old. I'm either more than halfway, I, I, I hope to live until I'm 90 or 100. Uh, when I turn 50, that would make, if you know, if I made it to 100, when I turn 50, that would make me halfway through life. My dad died at 68. If I go by history, um, my granddad is, my granddad died when he was 70, his father, my mother's father is 80 something. So he's still living. So I'm an average of all of those three, right? So I'm going to say I'm halfway through my life right now at 44 and man, I've experienced a lot and I think I can add a lot of value from my experience from my experiences and um 
I think I should tell these stories. Everyone thinks success is based on your money, like how much money you have. Like this is what everybody thinks. Like, oh, okay, I'm successful because I have this much money, but you could be miserable. And I don't think that's the metric that you go by, like to measure success. And that's why I wanna do longer form content. I have ideas. So I literally been working. This is where I, this has been my workstation for two months right here. And um, I have a lot of ideas about the direction and the packaging of what I want my new YouTube channel to look like. It's the same YouTube channel as me, but I have ideas on what I want my content to be moving forward. It's not going to be like the typical content. Um, and it's perfect to start with telling my story, uh, especially telling my story with my best friend, honestly. Uh, and I'm sure he needs to tell his stories as well. So, man, this is kind of like a blessing that we are both in Buffalo at the same time. He lives in Atlanta. Like, I don't know the last time we seen each other while in Buffalo. Don't do nothing bad. Oh, hell no. Look at this freaking car. Yo, how am I supposed to fit in this car? <laughs> Show ass in the car, man. Yo, bro, I got some good ideas, man. You ready for this? Yeah, what's up? Huh? What's up? Dude, I, like, I'm talking about this video. Yeah. Yo, I got, yo, this is going to be an epic video. I'm f like, like for, for sure, for sure. Um, Hold on, let me, I want you to meet my daughter. Right. Hi. Hey, so how you doing? So this is Rick. I'm good. How are you? Nice Hi, this nice is London. Oh my goodness, uh, first time seeing you since June. I know, it's like that. Long. 16 now. 16? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Crazy. You got a 16 year old. <laughs> no, no, I have a 17 year old. <laughs> hey, what's going on? <laughs> you know who that is? <laughs> you already know. You, look, look, you see? You already know what I'm about, you know? Look, look, at, he got, look he got grown kids, so huh? him. I'm good. <laughs> Look, yeah. this is this is my idea, bro. Like, what came out of my mouth earlier, that was really like some spontaneous shit where I was like, yo, like we really are halfway through our life or we are over the halfway point. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like for real, for real. And uh, I don't know where, I, where it came from, but this moment right here, we won't never get back again. Obviously, no moment in life you will get back again, right? You know what I'm saying? But especially something like this, like we won't get this moment, we won't get this time back again where both of us will be here in um, Buffalo at the same time like this. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't live here. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't live here and I really, really plan not to be here much. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm not sure when we'll get the opportunity to do this. Um, our stories are important. Our stories matter. Turn, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, turn right. Um, we, we've we been friends for how long now? Like over 25 years? Yeah. Right. It's a long time. You know what I mean? So uh, over half of our life we've been, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're like, we've been. Oh, way. It's even more than 25 oh, years probably, like huh? 30. No, we so met. 95. We, we, 95 we met? To 05 is what? That's 10 years. 05 to 15 is what? 20 years. 15 to 15, not 29 years? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. Yo, that's crazy. And, and the craziest shit is the, cra the, 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 the more I think about it. Oh, my bad, turn left. The more I think about it, we have. <laughs> we have escaped death like a lot of times. So this is what this is this is what I want this is what I want to do. Uh, let's go back to some of the places that we remember in our childhood. Specifically for me, this is what I want to do. And then you can tell me what you what you know what, what places are near to you that, that you can go to and tell your story. For me. I want us to go back to Riverside together 
and sit on the steps or go in the back and just talk about the things that um, we experienced, what we learned, and what will we tell our younger self? You know what I'm saying? I want to go back to Montclair um, because that we were 17 or 18 years old living in a foreclosed house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, literally, I'm an all Western New York basketball player, but I'm selling drugs. So we, you know what I mean? So, and you a little bit too, but so we can kind of eat. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And you were hustling something, you know. You was like more of a fundraiser, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you was calling people asking for money, but the, but the point about it is like, you know, like we was like living in this house alone or whatever, and I want to talk about that. I want to tell that story. Um, and then Coon Street, you know what I mean? And then wherever you want to go, you know what I mean? Because I'm sure you got some special places. But I think- Aries. Oh man, like for real. Yeah, but I think it's important for both of us right now to tell our story while we have, you know what I mean? Well, while we're together and we can remember some things and some things that I'll remember that you won't remember, some things that you'll remember that I won't remember, you know what I mean? Yeah. And just talk about it, man, you know what I mean? And just put all of this into something where it can, it can add value to uh, younger people. And also heal us a little bit, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? I, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm, I'm down for it. I think that it's is necessary, especially from the conversations that I've been having since I've been here uh, Wednesday, and the conversations that we were having just about uh, <laughs> raising kids, man, and see a certain aspects of it like that we can't sit here and dwell on it like you said we, we either we're over the hill about to you know like our, our life is coming to an end soon or we got halfway to the, to it you know what I mean like either way either way either which way you look at it I believe you gotta stay positive and you have to not dwell in what do you call that uh their the situations. And anytime I go down to uh, to fix the Airbnb, I um, I take this way. So I love water so much. None of this shit right here was here when we was in high school. Bro, this shit was like a dirty lot with like just a little plaza, but they ain't had much. <laughs> man, pull up in front. Yeah, yeah, oh, all right. On. This is our old, old stumping grounds, man. Right here, how, you know what I mean? How should we? How should we do it? This shit don't even look like it's open. <laughs> Free, Mr. Clark. <laughs> we can't even see the uh, the, the trophy case. Yeah, we did win the championship. me in the back of the locker room trying to get dressed no celebration i just wanted to leave Ricky, 20 points and 20 rebounds 20 points 20 rebounds in the game and i still didn't feel like it was enough we won a championship i still didn't want to be seen and maybe i was still fighting the shame of how i got to riverside Back at Riverside, the last time I was actually here at Riverside, I met Tafik, which is uh, crazy. Enough. I can't remember what year that was. It may have been like 2012, maybe. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Slim, Project Swag. I'm here at my alma mater, Riverside High School, here in Buffalo, New York. A lot of great times. You know, city champions, my junior year in basketball, all Western New York accolades for me. You know, you know how I do it. 
I'm here to swag out my little homie, uh, Tafik. Probably gonna like this in school colors. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't wanna... Thanks for doing this, though. No, no problem. So that was the last time I was here. I was filming Project Swag. Um, still never took in like my life at Riverside High School. Never like in like ingested really like what uh, what I, what my feelings was about even being here. Um, it's a bittersweet situation for me when I think about. Uh, my journey here at Riverside. How I got to Riverside, I was an angry kid, man. I was so angry, man. Like, from my home life, uh, being halfway at my mom's house, halfway at my dad's house, and I think I was just always feeling like, yo, I had something more, I had something more to give to the world, basically. And I always was, and I still feel this way now, but I was always feeling like I'm, I'm not getting to where I envision myself to get to. So that was one of the reasons I was, I was angry, but I was just always angry because I just, I just seen something more for myself, you know? Uh, things I've been through and things like that, I was angry. I, I was going to Turner Carroll, which is like, it's a Catholic school. It's a black, it was a black, a black Catholic school. I was starting varsity as a sophomore. Um, players that actually was on that team went on to Cornell University, University of Cincinnati. The guy that actually took my, my place went to University of Pittsburgh. So I was really in line to go to a big school, you know, if I stayed at Turner because I was doing nothing but improving every single year. But this one particular day, and this is how uh, advice I'm gonna tell young people right now is to, man, do not make emotional decisions. Like, don't do it. Do not make emotional decisions because one emotional decision can ruin your life and set you on a path that you can't come back from, right? Uh, so this one day, I don't know what was going on, but I'm leaving the school and I get into this, this fight with this foreign exchange student. I even remember his name. He was a Mexican kid. His name was Moses. And of course, like, like I started it, you know, yo, picking on him or something like that. And I think he kicked me or something like that. And I hauled off and I hit Moses, man. And I guess like. When you have so much anger balled, balled up inside you, you know, all, all of those things went into that punch. Bam, you know? And next thing I know, I see this kid, his, his eye is leaking. It was one punch. And I think that was a Friday. By Monday, I was kicked out. And by the end of the week, I was here at Riverside. And the thing about coming to Riverside is the good thing was that I was already a highly touted athlete. I was like next up. You know, we were those guys that were going to be the next top basketball players in Buffalo. So people knew me. Outside of basketball, if I came to Riverside without any, any sports or anything, I would have had a very, very hard time. Because even the very first day, it was a guy that wanted to fight me so I would I would have had a hard time, you know. And the one thing that I also remember is I had no discipline here whatsoever. I never remember being told to do homework. Honestly, I don't even know how I made it through, made it out of high school because I don't remember doing any work or whatever. And I, you know, I can say I, I, I wasn't a good student because I wasn't, but I needed people to support me in ways that was on the court, but definitely off the court. Because when I came here, it was just a free for all. I mean, when I got here, I was leaving school at halfway, you know, I was going out the back door, like, <laughs> like leaving school, 
and go and, and going to hang out. I wish someone was watching over me more closely because I could have been a different, you know, I could have had a, had a different result. And that's not not to say that I'm, you know, uh, not to say that I'm bad with my result that I am right now, but I, it could have just been a different result. So those are my initial, you know, sentiments of coming to Riverside and I have mixed feelings about it, you know. It's definitely big, you know, it's definitely like like mixed feelings about it. It's 30 in 97, <laughs> 98. Yo, I remember against Kizzleton on this field, bro. <laughs> I remember this was the toughest game that we ever played, bro. I remember I remember homie Roderick Roderick, he with the uh City Honors. Uh -huh. He caught a tip pick. I, I tipped it. Bah! That nigga caught that shit, took that shit all the way down the sideline, and somebody, oh, he scored. Uh -huh. Knocked him out, he, he scored. So we had to go for two to basically win the game. So we used to always run this uh, the option. It was, it was some bullshit shit. It was like I-27, either he handed or he or he say option in the huddle, or they say option at the line. So Gary, you know, small Gary, Gary like, yo, option. He didn't really want to run this shit. Cause he's small. So he said, he said, he seen the front. So he turned around to me, he said, option. So when he turned and he faked that shit to, what's his name? The end came down, bam. So when he coming over, the corner comes and he pitches it to me, boom. The safety coming, it was just me and the safety. <laughs> boom, the safety bigger than me. Like, yo, how you like, he's like 6'2". Boom, I stick the ball in the end zone. Yo, I turn up and get up and I salute the crowd. This shit was so crazy over there, but that shit was lit. Cause it was, you know, the Ken Riverside rivalry between basketball and football. That shit was so lit, bro. I, I remember this day only only like nine seconds left to go in the game. All I remember here at the end of the game is motherfuckers over there like, yo, they ruined, they ruined their season. Cause we wasn't gonna make the playoffs. They like, they ruined y'all season, y'all niggas doodle, y'all niggas trash. And you hear Mark like, yo. Yeah, it's a good shit, yo. Yeah, good shit. You know, you know how Mark be like, yo, we got them niggas. Yeah, got them. And um, but yeah, that was my my memory playing on this field. I mean, there's other memories. Yeah, but that memory was one. That, that's the that's the first one that come out of your come mind, when, of my mind. When you stepped on, when you stepped on the field, that was that's the first thing. That shit rushed me, bro. Because I wow. remember how hard that game was, but we was hitting, and we was, man, I'm telling you, Kissington ran. Seneca was physical. That year, because of du uh, Brandon and uh, the other kid, uh, Brandon's Juice, aka Juice. But this, these boys, they were so much bigger, than, and we was hammering them boys. Them boys was not, yo, they, yo, these boys was so tired and out of shape. You know, them niggas smoking weed. You know, <laughs> them niggas was gangsters, man. Niggas gangsters. <laughs> look at the facility. Hold on, look. Facility, no, bro. look at the look at the weight room, bro. Come look at on, that. Man. That's just crazy. Look at the weight room, man. Looking back on my senior year, I lived, but I lived, I lived, I had to pay my own bills. I had to worry about eating. I had a drinking habit at the time. Not not so much, but you know what I mean? It was there because you could start to feel it coming on. But I just won a championship in basketball. <laughs> so I'm thinking that this shit gonna come natural. I'm thinking that I could just step on the motherfucking field and I could go, I could, I could do my thing, you know what I'm saying? So I really can't sit there and say that. I, I will say this though. Taking heed to your dad. Listening to your dad telling us on oh, Montclair, y'all fucking gotta work. What the fuck are y'all doing? <laughs> I, I'm like, yo, him turning around looking at me in disgust. <laughs> yo, if, if if my dad was there every fucking day, this is a different story. Okay. The point that we are fucking living on our own, really. So yeah, you can say, yeah, he, my dad looked at you with disgust. He was fucking looking at me with disgust too. But pops, you ain't here every every day. You understand what I'm saying? Like you under, like, do you understand that we living in a foreclosed home? <laughs> mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like when we fucking seven, 18 years old. Right, you know what I mean? Like, what are we supposed to do? We have no supervision. Eating chicken for yourselves. Right. Fuck working out. <laughs> we trying to figure out where the fuck we gonna get some food from. Mm -hmm. 
what I would say, what I would say is to my younger self, uh, I would say, because I was so, I was so, so wanted, I wanted so, so bad to make it to Division One. I. I didn't have any grades um, to, to, to make it there. When I'm hearing, yo, this guy just committed, or this guy just, you know, is uh, is is committed to this to these schools. Cause I'm, we hear it, you know, we hear it. Um, and I so so knew that I was good enough to play at that play at that higher level. But I would tell my younger self to take your time. You know, the, you know what you're doing is not right and get away from those people. That's not your life. And you know better. I would tell my younger self to you know, we, you know what I'm saying? Like, without the internet or without, you know, what we what we know of the world now there was no internet now a, a 17 18 year old can look at the world through the internet but if i was to tell my younger self and we had the internet i would say leave you know what you want and you know that it's not going to happen in this city take whatever money you had have and go someplace else in the, in, the, in, in, in in the states wherever that may be I always felt like I was alone anyway. That's what I would tell my younger self. I can tell you wish you played on here. I, I, can, I can tell that it's, I can tell that there's some pain that you wish you played, you know, you wish you had this. You know what I mean? I, I, I can tell that you, you, like you wish you had this opportunity. How does, how does that feel? I think I lived vicariously through when I was coaching. Being a coach was rewarding because it was an opportunity to kind of live vicariously through some of your players and teach them some of the things that you wish that was taught to you and that you learned. Um, and that's why I still got kids that call me up and say, coach, no. So this right here kind of hurts because we, we were pissed off that we had to take a night game and go to fucking, to the fruit belt. We could have been here on Friday night. This could have been our Friday night lights. This could, I could have been the Booby Miles. I got this facility now. It's crazy though, it's Friday, school is out. We should have a ton of kids up there. Training. Training and working out. But I would have been here, yo. If I had this, instead of the shit that we had, and the grass was all the way up to the ankles coming back here, if I had this shit, I would have, I would have been here every fucking day. I would have been here every fucking day, every day. That right there, that was an accessible to you? Oh, man. Tell, me it, man. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. It hurts. I, when I was ending my junior year of, of high school here at Riverside, my father, he had been fighting because my father, he had rheumatoid arthritis, he had Asian orange, he had some other, you know, some other things that was wrong with his body, but all of it came from being in the war of Vietnam. So he'd been fighting to, to get health care, he'd been fighting with the VA and fighting with Social Security so he can get the, um, so he can get the money that he deserved. And he had, and he had finally got it, right? He had finally got it. And what that means for associate, I got Social Security first before he got the, the money from the VA. So um, with Social Security, what happens is they um, they give your kid back pay as well, but then they also give the kid a certain amount of money per month. So I was awarded that. So I was awarded like this back pay, and then I was also awarded um, like I can't remember if it was like three hundred dollars a month, but it was some some something like that, like per month or whatever. I think the amount that I had gotten back pay was like $6,000. So as a 17 year old kid, bro, I was like, 
that was like the world to me. And of course, the first thing I wanted to do was buy a car. I think I bought a car for like 2,500 bucks. It was like an Oldsmobile. Um, then I bought some rims for like 1,500. Uh, sneakers, of course. All the sneakers that I ever wanted, I went and bought those sneakers. Um, super soaker so this is like the end of the year you know what i mean like it's the end of the year i bought all the cds that i could possibly buy dmx jay-z i bought all of that shit so this one day this is like close to like the last day of school literally 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 i parked right here right here i parked right here i promise you this is the place that i park i parked right here and because I was late to school, I did not put the club on, but I'm like, yo, I'm right in front of school, right? I come outside after school and my car is gone. It was like one of the worst things that ever really happened to me. Um, people were always kind of like taking things from me and for somebody to take that from me, it's like, like, man, they took everything from me when they took that car. And that shit still hurts to this day, honestly. You know, it, that, like, like, that shit still hurts to this day. But that was my, that's the end of that story. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as being a kid, and I was playing football for inner city, man, and my dad, he didn't take me to practice. I'm getting a ride. I'm getting a ride with you know the drop off coat by the coaches and shit. And some of the some of the players is like, yo, Rick, that was your dad right there. I'm like, what? So I look out the window. I'm like, yo, pop, what's up? He's like, yo, what's up? I said, you yeah, shit, yo, let me get in with you. Go home. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, come on. I'm like what? Like where you be at to where you getting dropped off? By somebody else. You know, where you be at to where you can't even know, know that I got football practice. Where you ain't even invested in that. Like, where your mind ain't even there. Like, where you at? Like, no matter what, with my kids, if they was into something, I was into it. I don't know nothing about cheerleading, but I guarantee you I play football and I know that that's, that's something that kids, that girls do. Right. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and so... I just like you're born in Buffalo, man. You just can't help where you where your fucking your your, your dad's seat was dropped at, dropped off at. Maybe they should have been in California or something. Think you would have had better results for your life, athletically at least. Uh, athletically at least. The other thing, the other thing I would say is. Yo, people here are just different people, man. Your girl, like, you meet, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's just a different, she's just a, you see how, like, immediately when she met my daughter, she just started talking to her about what she wanted to do and things like that. She immediately poured into her. Hey, hey. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Beautiful. What grade are you in? I'm gonna be a junior. You're gonna be a junior, okay? Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about going into law, being a lawyer. Oh, you know that's my background. Really? What kind of, what kind of law do you want to do? You want to do criminal or do you want to do civil? Criminal. You want to do criminal. You understand what I'm saying? She immediately poured into her. You don't get that here, bro. Yo, I, I, I don't know. And I'm not, I can't say never because I can't think off the top of my head. With you, it's not many people that's gonna pour into you here. They gonna fucking break you down, yo. They gonna tell you what you are not. If anyone wants to be honest, they should be honest about this place. Because like my my experience in this in this place has not been a good experience. I'll be honest with you. That's why I never want to come here. I just have to be, you know, what I'm saying 100 percent honest about the shit. Is like I don't have a good experience in Buffalo and being from Buffalo. Um, again, I am halfway or more through my life and it's taken me enough, this, this, this amount to, to really express that and just be honest about my real thoughts and my feelings about being from this city. Like I was jumped several times here. 
<laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like so many bad things happened to me here. Like, and hopefully I'll be able to tell my full story one day on a platform. Um, but so many bad things happened to me here. And things that I didn't deserve as a kid. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like an innocent kid, I didn't deserve those things happening to me. Um, wow, my crazy bad memories, like two, a year ago, two years ago, my cousin got killed. That I, he got only been out of jail for four years. He got killed right here, I set up. Gigi's, burnt down. Never came back. It did come back somewhere else, but, but that was a staple in the neighborhood. This is my neighborhood, man. Like nice houses over here now too. They done did some 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 places and built it up. Um, what area is this called? This is Cold Spring. <laughs> so Northland, Purdy. Um, we used to go to this church right here to get uh, free lunches and shit on Saturdays. Me and my cousin Dwayne, and my sisters. This was my grandmother's house. And it was a two two eight Waverly, man. I never. Never forget um, playing football in the yard, playing football in the, in, in, in the street. Like, this is my grandmother's old house, man. She passed away. She gave it to my mom. My mom, at 30 something years old, didn't know what to do with it. This is my childhood. I used to play football from pole to, we had three poles, and my friend. Pole to pole. Pole to pole. My friend Daryl Mack. Remember Daryl Mack, D Mack? Daryl, we used to, Ernest, we used to all be out here. I used to kill these little niggas, man. Me, 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 and, me and Junior on the same team. We used to play all, we, we play all day. All day, man. And you know what's so crazy, man? Like his grandmother and my grandmother, they used to be like, no cussing, no fussing. And we don't want to see nothing else. You just stay outside all day. What's your, what's your first what's your first memories from my first memories yeah from yeah, uh, yeah. my great grandmother being living in the in the, in the in the house and having the one room she stayed downstairs and her always saying to me take that take that wine and shit outside grown <laughs> man grown man don't run the wine I mean I'm, I'm only like eight eight years old you know what I'm saying but this, this lady was small man you remember like my grandmother was small, but my great grandmother was like tiny, man. Like, and she, but she had the, the the roar of a giant. And when she talked, everybody listened. And that was her house first, and then she gave it to my grandmother. Whatever, at whatever age you want to give advice to, where you had a problem that you want to, you can come to if you could come to that kid, and, and or that kid was lost, or that kid was, you know, um, you could help that kid. Whatever age, come to that would, kid, I and would, what would you advise? What, what advice would you give to I him? I would say, at 16 years old, I would have became a man in this household earlier, and realized that yo, ownership was the was the right way. I should have never let this house go. My mom, like I should have, I should have been there to say no and had a fight in that. At 16, and her letting the house go to for for chump for change for, for nothing really, really set our family back, to be honest with you. Because had I would have known that this house, what I know now about property and what I know now just in general, like I was telling Antonio, Junior, almost, <laughs> as I was telling Junior, I would have bought the rest of this shit. Because I understood, like, this is the most important thing in your life. You don't let this go. Legacy is legacy. This, this is How does it make you feel? It's tough to see, man. I was just talking to uh, my girl maybe like two months, April, April, and we called him about this apartment, and about this apartment, about this house, and we looked it up. It's $42,000. It worth. Now what he put into it, you have to see. So you you would buy it back if you could? Hell yeah. It don't even matter the money though. See, the money don't even matter. It is the legacy. It is, what if my daughter, Tristan, the youngest one, decides to Say, hey, Dad, I'm about to, I'm going to stay in Buffalo and go to school. She don't need to be paying for rent and doing the room and board and paying all that money on the room and board. You know what I mean? Guess what? You at home. Here you go. 
Okay. That's what you say. Your cable bill, your light bill, everything else is taken care of. Go to school, do what you're supposed to do, and the home is yours. That's what's up. Legacy. She was kind of, she was kind of nice. Yeah. Damn. I still got it. <laughs> I still got it. So, yo, so Kurt Flakes used to live right there. <laughs> Kurt Flakes used to live right there. It was a house right there. Obviously, got tore down. Um, Will used to live there. Josh Beasley used to live there. Mark Price used to live there. <laughs> did a great job. It's a very, very nice house. And I got videos of playing basketball in the back of in the back of this yard. It's probably good. Yeah. This bring back a lot of memories for sure. Because it wasn't really a good time for me in my life. Um, but it was a good time in my life as well because this is when my basketball thing started. I used to do this thing, I used to paint sneakers before that was a big thing or whatever. Um, I used to watch Michael Jordan here. Uh, and all, like most of the guys on this street was pretty, was really, really cool. I do remember that. Um, I do remember that. But at that point in my life, where we were just living here in a foreclosed home without the supervision. Um, that wasn't a great time in my life or whatever, to be honest with you. What would I tell my younger self? <laughs> Man, I would tell my younger self as I you know, watch these older videos of me playing basketball in the yard. Come on, Mr. Basket Man. <laughs> it's all you. Woo. Get footage of me and my mother playing. tell my younger self to keep the dream alive and do not stop no matter what. Good with your family? Not good, bro. How you feel, man? It's been ages, <laughs> man. <laughs> man. What's up, man? What, 11 years old? Well, here you go. Me 11? <laughs> there go you? What's up, man? How, How are you, dude? You know I can't complain, man. Yeah. So, you know, so, I, so I asked you, the daughter, so I said, yo, I said, I said, um, is Kurt Flake still in there? She said, the big one and the little one. I said, <laughs> yeah, I got a junior. I said, uh, the one that's probably around my age. Said, How old are you? I said, I'm 40 something. See, oh, that's my dad. <laughs> hey, yo, you never left the street. Nah, JB down the street too. Who's that to you? Josh, you used to stay right Josh here. Jesus? Yes. No, he not. Man, we call this man my father. I heard you was doing a documentary, man. What you doing? Nah, well. It's, it's like, it's not like a documentary, man, just capturing my story. You know, I don't live here no more. Yeah, yeah, where Columbia. you live at? I live, I, live I, I live out the country. I live in Columbia. I'm building a company, so. Where? Yeah, so I've been here for That's like good. the last couple of months just doing some doing some things with family. My, my daughter just, gra my oldest daughter just graduated from high school. Open? Any of them open? My, uh, my, my youngest, she, she probably gonna, she 11. 
Yeah, she got her, she got a frame like she got a frame like like me. You remember the games we used to have in practice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we used to think we was Jordan in the yard. Man, man. what? <laughs> real? We used to have the music. Man, yo, the we, hoop, used to, we used to draw the lines in the joint. Man, we, we used to had, go hard. Yeah, we used to go hard. Yo. We used to take that shit serious for sure. Huh? Yeah, I used to live right there. Yep. We used right to ball in that backyard. Yeah. So the big court was right here, <clears> and then they had the other court for like you know what I'm saying for like yeah. the younger people. Yeah, and yeah. you could not go to the big court unless you was ready because guess who they had? Ice, burn. Harry Dave, this was when Xavier was alive, remember? Yeah, man. Like, yeah, so my very so my very up. first time, I remember the very first time I played on the big court. Boston. I played I played on the same team as Harry Dave. Harry Dave was like my idol, bro. Harry Dave? Don't he still be around the corner on that? And every now and then he come floss through. Harry Dave. Harry how Dave? How yeah. you look? Short, he, he's short, boy headed, got the got the beard. He used yeah. to do, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. He still, he still be over there hustling on Rodney. And get out of here. That's what I'm about to he say. He walk yeah. with a limp now. Yeah. For real? He like this. Say. Yo, listen, he walk with a limp. Remember the twins? Listen. The twins with the wet ass jumpers and shit that used to be up there, the tall. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I still see them. They still be in the hood. I was about to say, everybody's still around. Yeah. Listen, Harry Dave. Yo, I'm talking about yo, yo, the, the dumps that Harry Dave used to do. I'm telling you, like Harry Dave, I used to go to the park and sit in awe of watching Harry Dave, bro. Like the shit that he was doing, 360. How old, how old would he be right now? About 50 something? No, I'm still gonna take her bike right here. Got yeah, the upper 50 thing. Yeah, but the, 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 the very first, the very first We're time. We're probably riding down Rocky right, right now. He's standing out of the That's crazy. And he got a, and he got a limp. Yeah, the, got the, the, the very first time I played at, with the with the big people, I played on Harry Day's team. I had some, I had some green, some lime green jeans. <laughs> I had some because I ain't like I ain't even know the time. Yo, I ain't know. Yo, but they gave me the opposite. They gave me like they gave me they gave me the confidence though. Like for real, Harry. Like like when I played that one time, they gave me they gave me the confidence. And from there, I was like, yo, I can play with the big people. You feel what I'm saying? Like that was my that was my first time. I, yo, I remember it like it was like it was yesterday. Oh, this this yeah, this is all dangerous area, bro, for sure. Genesee, Genesee Moselle, Moselle Ferry. Bad. Moselle bad. and Box. It's just bad. Yo, all of this shit is gone. This is crazy. I need to buy the block. Yeah, you want to buy the block. I don't want to buy the block. Yo. All of this is gone. Yo, this is crazy. Crazy time. Yo, I used to live right here. Yo, my house. This probably was my driveway. Yo, this is nuts, bro. My house was right here. Do you remember that? I remember it. Crazy, my house right here. Like, I used to cut this lawn. It was another house that was right there, too. Houses. Oh, my friends Leo and Quinn used to live right, right across the street from me. Damn. By the, by the way. I did a Google Maps of my old street from 2007. And that was my house in 2007. I went there maybe in 2005, and it was the same. I used to live here. Bring back a lot of memories, you know what I mean? So you grew up in Buffalo. And I grew up right here, my whole childhood here. The golden theme is what would I tell my younger self, right? So I did go from Montclair, and then I stayed here for a very short period of time. This house is also in for foreclosure. So I stayed in two foreclosure, two foreclosed houses as a teenager. <laughs> what would I tell younger Hassan um, growing up here? I would tell him, yo, the world is a huge place. Don't get stuck here. And I did it. The 
what advice would I give my younger self? Be creative. Because I remember when I was young, quick story, when I was young, I used to make these little, I wanted to be an architect, and I used to make these little, uh, these little stadiums, uh, like football stadiums I used to make with like um, art supplies basically. And um, so I was, I was a creative then and I didn't know I was a creative. So I would say, yo, keep, keep being creative. I would stay, I was also tell my younger self, stay alive and stay safe because this was a very, very dangerous neighborhood. Um, very, very dangerous place. I've seen a lot of things here. I remember the older guys, because used, we used to hang out around the corner on Goodyear. I remember the older guys, they say, it was one day, they say, yo, listen, yo, kids, y'all gotta, you know, y'all gotta get out the way today. And um, we're like, yo, what's, what's that mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't no, whatever. The time came, you know, that was like early in the day when they said that, but then later on that day, the time came that it was something that was gonna happen. You see these two guys, they riding on a bike and they go from all the way down the, down the street, Goodyear, and they circle this block right here. And they go across, back across through the, through the churchyard. And um, the person that they wanted was in the street. I guess they had seen them, hopped on a bike, they knew it was time. Went, rode the bike, circled around, went through the churchyard. Gunned them down, I seen it. That was my first time seeing somebody get shot. Uh, I remember, I remember a lot of things. <laughs> I remember a lot of things. Um, but I also would tell my younger self, this is going to make you who the fuck you are going to become. Because no matter what, this has made me me. This has made me who I am today. There ain't no argument with that. Through the hard times, through the good times, all the memories, the times I was crying, the times I was scared, everything has made me who I am today. And halfway through my life, I can say that I'm okay. I can say that I'm good with it, and I can say, yo, let's do the other half of life. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I can say. One more thing I want to add is I would tell my younger self to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself without reasonable doubt. I would tell my younger self, talk to yourself every single day and say, believe and tell yourself you're great. Tell yourself you can do anything that you want to do in the world. Tell yourself, this is now, but ain't no telling where the future gonna be, you know, like, for real. Who would have fucking known that I could come from this right here and do the stuff that I've done and I'm still just, I'm just getting started. So, yo, that's what it is. Yo, end of this vlog. So, as I'm editing this episode, it's a part where I source footage from when we won the championship in high school. And that's me at 18 years old. And when I was sourcing this footage, I found this right here. This is my dad at the championship game. And the crazy thing about it is I didn't even know my dad was at that game. I didn't even remember that he was at that game. And, you know, in this conversation, me and my friend, we talked about, you know, the things that we went through. And one thing that now that I know as a parent and that I wish I could apply back to my life when I was young is empathy. Um, my dad 
and my mother had their own battles in life and one thing I know is that they did the best with what they were given so you know me as a teenager I can say that even right now what makes me who I am today is the resilience the resilience to know exactly what I want and to know exactly what I'm going for and not let anyone get in the way and not let anyone stop me so with that said my parents did the best that they can do now as a parent I can take this and pass it along and hopefully my kids can understand empathy because they won't know and they won't understand the things that I had to go through this is episode one of the new daily type of vlogs or daily stories that I want to tell um, but yeah I just wanted to say that because my dad was there at the game and rest in peace dad